Join me as we explore the details and the intricacies of what it takes to recreate and reinterpret an icon of the 20th century, the Dior bar jacket. My name is Rebecca. I'm a designer and fiber artist and I have a unique approach to learning. I like to combine my knowledge of high fashion, fashion history, and garment making to learn by emulating some of the greatest designers and pieces in history through hands-on experimentation. Welcome to the first episode of the Masters series where we reimagine and learn from iconic fashion pieces throughout history. Today we're doing something really special. We are tackling an absolute fashion legend, the Dior bar jacket, while adding my own Rebecca Thayer spin to it. The idea to recreate this particular piece came to me as I was researching archival Dior pieces, specifically some from the John Galliano era. I've always been a bit averse to the bar jacket and the new look itself. However, a specific design kept bringing me back to look at it over and over. It was an exquisite piece from the 1997-98 Haute Couture Autumn Winter Collection. It featured a stunning squared collar, a beautifully nipped in waist, and a fairly understated peplum to complement the weight on the top of the garment. This particular iteration done by John Galliano for Christian Dior really resonated with me because it was a blend of kind of that classical elegance with a touch of modernity. And it really became kind of a cornerstone of what my vision for the garment was for this recreation project. Post-World War II, as Europe emerged from fabric rationing and the make-do-and-mend mentality, the Dior bar jacket shattered norms with its lavish fabric use and curve-embracing silhouette, very reminiscent of the Edwardian period. This jacket and the new look that Dior had created marked a stark contrast to the era's austerity, symbolizing indulgence and a return to traditional femininity a move that was both celebrated and critiqued for its impact on women's societal roles. As we recreate this jacket, we'll not only dive into its rich history, but also challenge its structure and symbolism a bit. Join me in redefining this piece through innovative draping, meticulous couture hand finishing, and a fresh vision that to me brings it into the modern era. First, let's address some historical context on the environment in which the Dior new look came into being. Women's fashion during World War II was either non-existent or incredibly utilitarian based on women actually performing jobs that were traditionally a man's during the war. All garment production went towards making uniforms for the military, and the UK famously adopted a phrase called make do and mend to motivate the reuse of textiles since they were in such limited supply. Following the end of the war, the introduction of the Dior bar jacket became a symbol of femininity and luxury. The bar jacket was created in 1947 by Christian Dior, who, to quote Alexander Fury, wanted to create a new fashion for a new era, sweeping away the austerity of wartime. To quote Dior himself from his autobiography, he said, we were just emerging from a poverty-stricken, parsimonious era, obsessed with ration books, and clothes coupons, it was only natural that my creations should take the form of a reaction against the dearth of imagination. Europe was tired of dropping bombs and now only wanted to let off fireworks. While Dior's words seem to be fairly revolutionary and empowering, his collection intended to emulate the silhouette of a flower with the goal of emphasizing a woman's delicate femininity. This is a stark contrast to the overall clad image of women during the war and is credited with ushering in that 1950s pinup hyper feminized male gaze silhouette that followed. To quote Alexander Fury once again, Le Bar emphasized nature but then exaggerates it, creating an idealized version of the female form crafted at the hands of a man. That description helps to emphasize the problematic, redactive nature of the silhouette following the 1930s when women were more and more finding ways to wear trousers, looser fitting clothing, 
and more masculine suiting. The Libar jacket and the new look not only metaphorically restricted the concept of a modern woman, it quite literally weighed them down and returned them to a corseted, idealized silhouette. The history of the Dior bar jacket can and should be viewed in its many facets, both complementary and otherwise. But regardless of that, it's still an absolute work of art. When it comes to construction, the visual impact of the silhouette and the legacy that it created so long into the future. So my initial sketch that reimagined that particular jacket maintained the structure of that very oversized collar, but then extended the peplum a lot further to give it more of a length to the jacket, which I thought was very modern. To contrast the skirt that came with the original new look, I paired it instead with a pair of cargo shorts, which felt like a very contemporary update. The vision I initially had was to craft it from an upcycled blanket that had this incredible print on it. And then on the reverse had a contrasting print, which I thought would look really incredible with the shape of that collar. And the casual upcycled vibe was something that I really wanted to infuse in this reimagining. <laughs> of the jacket. However, first I needed to just learn how to make it. And so I needed to do essentially a 12 version, which became more of the project in and of itself. There are famously no patterns of the original Dior bar jacket. And since this was meant to be a learning exercise, I decided to drape the shape of the jacket, starting with the base of a traditional blazer in order to discover how to actually execute those shapes in the future. There is a video on YouTube that was filmed during 2020 or 2021 at the Dior Atelier where they were actually making miniatures of the pieces and one of the members of the atelier actually was draping a bar jacket on the miniature. And after seeing that incredible process, it definitely boosted my confidence that perhaps that I too, with a little bit of luck, could drape the structure. Again, I began with the flat pattern base of a traditional blazer that fit me in the shoulders, but was a little bit more oversized and then left extra fabric on all of the muslin pieces so I could start pinning them into that shape. There were a lot of darts and I ended up actually separating the top and the peplum in the muslin only to rejoin them later in order to get that tightness in the bodice and then the peplum in the bottom. I then transferred those 12 pieces to paper where the darts were absorbed into princess seams throughout the body of the garment. For fabric selection, I turned to my existing collection of mainly dead stock fabric. I chose a yellow gabardine, which had always to me been something that just screamed it should be a suit. And this vibrant fabric became the base for my initial attempt at the Dior bar jacket. I also opted for dead stock silk organza for facing which added a lot of strength without compromising some of the jacket's fluidity. The lining was also another find for my current collection. And for the final touches, I actually utilized a roll of dead stock wool felt that's traditionally used for the dolmette in a structured blazer. And I happen to have quite a bit of that. And that actually became custom shoulder pads as well. So it was a very useful fabric. Construction of the initial segments of the jacket was quite straightforward, just using a traditional sewing machine. The silk organza serving as an interfacing added such an elegant heft and weight to the seams. It pressed open beautifully and really made the gabardine look so expensive and beautiful. Surprisingly, the peplum's curve, just from the pattern pieces that I cut out, did form the shape that I wanted without too many adjustments. However, the understructure to support that peplum was another story. So I sewed all of the base pieces together, but needed to find a way to basically hold out this 3D shape on the peplum. And up until this point, the jacket's construction had been fairly intuitive, but I did hit a snag when it came to the padding. I just 
didn't know how to visualize what should be under that jacket in order to create that curve volume and really support the fabric. I was sent a YouTube by Tracy that was absolute gold. It was, I think, one of the only videos that exists in actually inspecting the Dior bar jacket. It was the Victorian Albert Museum. And that also led to another video where a female tailor had tried to replicate some of the understructure of the Dior bar jacket, which was so incredibly useful. I'll link it if you wanna check it out. From these two videos, I learned two very crucial things. The first, the front of the skirt, when lifted up, should form half a circle, which was something that mine very fortuitously kind of does, but would have again been very helpful to know ahead of time. So that would have made it much easier to make sure that my pattern pieces were forming the right shape. The second thing was in the opinion of that tailor, the closest thing that we had in kind of our modern arsenal to replicate the padding of the peplum would be to just completely line it with shoulder pads. Now, I did not have a pile of shoulder pads at the ready. So instead I relied on my couture pad stitching skills where I knew how to pad stitch the wool felt into a shoulder pad and decided to create my own. The padding itself actually shaped up really nicely. The wool held a really beautiful shape with just a little bit of pad stitching to give it that curve. A new challenge emerged as I started to sew them into the garment itself. Despite my careful stitching, I was only doing very delicate prick stitches where you just grab the inside layer of the gabardine. You're not supposed to see it on the other side. The weight of the padding still caused it to pucker inwards and dimple, which was not a very attractive look for the outside of the garment. I ended up cutting everything out, starting over, re-interfacing with actual just fusible interfacing underneath the silk organza, and then re-pad stitching everything into place. This was not an easy task, and I'd say one of the hardest parts of this entire project, as it took several days to meticulously hand sew that into place, combined with the frustration of fundamentally the padding being a bit too heavy for the fabric but the effort was ultimately fairly successful in order to achieve the jacket's final distinctive tulip shape without having it look like the jacket had consumed a lot of cottage cheese. The last steps of construction involved adding a couture lining, which just means that the sleeve piece is sewn in separate from the body and everything is hand felled together, which is a particular stitch that kind of wraps the seams around itself so that you don't see anything inside and everything kind of magically disappears. I learned something really important on this step because again, any hand stitching is time consuming, requires some practice before the stitch even looks slightly like it's doing the right thing. But when you have a jacket like this, where the shoulders have actually been fit to the body, which this one has, in order to preserve that beautiful fit between your shoulder pads, the shoulder and the sleeve, and that effortless movement that happens with a well-fitted blazer of any kind, you do have to sew in the sleeve lining and the jacket body lining separately. So that was something that I learned. I first tried it the wrong way. I was trying to cut some corners. It just did not have that same effortless feel. And this is a strategy that I think going forward, I don't think I'll ever be able to do a single piece lining again, unless it's something that's really loose fitting and it just doesn't matter if you're preserving that outside fit of the garment. In the final stages of the garment construction, I ended up trimming down the collar because it was actually quite challenging to have it fit just ever so nicely on the lapel. So I basted them together, sewed it in, closed everything up, and that was the completion of the main body of the garment. In order to bring the bar jacket into a more modern 21st century, I knew initially that I wanted a wide leg trouser to be paired with it rather than that full heavy skirt. However, I didn't feel like the length of the trouser would provide the right balance. Instead, I created a knee length short 
in that same golden gabardine fabric. I decided to leave off those initial cargo elements that were in the original drawing since they had felt more appropriate for the weight of something that was made out of a wool blanket. Not quite the right balance for the gabardine. As I integrated the jacket in my wardrobe, and as with everything, decided to wear it around, I realized I preferred the silhouette open rather than buttoned up. The styling choice of leaving this structured piece relaxed and open makes the jacket feel less formal and makes it much more suited to everyday wear. It aligns well when you're trying to take this classical piece and really fit it in with the wardrobe of your everyday modern woman. Reimagining the Dior bar jacket was a fantastic learning experience for me. One key lesson was the unparalleled value of always hand felling in a lining on a jacket, as I mentioned earlier. It simply fits better and it really makes you feel like you're almost not wearing anything, which is such a contrast when you think of a restrictive jacket and the weight that might have come with this particular blazer in the 1940s. So this technique will now be a staple in all of my future Future designs. I also learned a very good lesson on tension and weight in fabric when it came to the padding and its complete and total incompatibility with my gabardine. A material called crinoline would have actually been a much better alternative. It's a material that's been used for some 70 years, is much lighter weight. It's made out of polyester but allows you to create those same shapes with almost no added bulk to the garment. So it's a choice I would likely use in future designs instead of the heavy wool felt. Another really important takeaway for me from this experience was you can drape a very structured shape like a blazer, but it's really that willingness to test, to learn, to make more than one toile to ensure you have the right pieces that it's actually gonna fit together well to actually determine the right outcome. But you don't need to just flat pattern piece something. You can absolutely drape a structured piece as well. Now I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on trying to balance this classic piece with a contemporary approach to it? How would you have approached this iconic design. Share your ideas in the comments below. And if you enjoyed recreating the bar jacket with me, don't forget to subscribe and follow along. Each episode is a new adventure and your support means the world to me. And speaking of the next episode, keep an eye out for the next edition of the Masters series. We will be tackling ever intriguing world of Issey Miyake and blanket coats. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.